Thanks for watching the Daily Debate Live Thursdays with Tagreed Hussein here on Nile TV International. A very special edition uh, of the World Youth Forum, the second edition actually, and uh, a very special edition of the debate for tonight, where we are going to be uh, discussing this important uh, headline. Uh, when uh, the World Youth Forum takes place, you feel Egypt is in celebration, in celebration of the spirit of the youth. And uh, while today we are inviting youth from all over the world, so uh, I guess the uh, sense of festivity is taking place uh, in Sharm el-Sheikh in the City of Peace, welcoming uh, Egypt's guests and international delegations coming from all over the world and participating in the World Youth Forum, the annual forum held from the 3rd to the 6th of November under the auspices and with the presence of His Excellency President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi takes place in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. Nearly 5,000 Egyptian and foreign youth are participating as well as experts, journalists, public figures, also officials from more than 50 countries. The forum tackles many topics like esports, empowering those with disabilities, entrepreneurship and gender with a special focus on development, on peace as well as uh, creativity. So uh, very important uh, is engaging the youth and listening uh, to the youth. Today we're listening to the youth in Egypt, youth coming from around the globe in an enriching setup and allowing them exchanging views to exchange views and, and also to recommend initiatives uh, to the decision makers and also to the influential figures. We'll be talking the World New Youth Forum in the second edition uh, tonight and I have all the honor uh, and a pleasure to be hosting Professor Dr. Ahmed Abdel Tawab, a professor of linguistics at Minufaya University. Dr. Abdel Tawab has always been engaged with the youth whether inside Egypt through uh, lecturing and also outside of Egypt in the United States and more than one renowned capital all over the world. Thank you, Professor, for coming. Well, thank you, Tari, for having me today. It has been a pleasure to be hosted on your show for the second consecutive time. So thank you once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdel Taweb. And uh, talking about the second edition of the World Youth Forum, when we talk about the World Youth Forum, it comes in mind, of course, the spirit of the youth, the initiatives, uh, their brains, <coughs> engaging them in the decision-making process. Right, right. Uh, a, a very important issue, and also uh, listening to them, which right. is very important. The president initiated uh, uh, this uh, story of uh, listening, being a good listener right. uh, to the youth and engaging them in the decision-making process, letting them initiate uh, the story. Right. Um, it does, and it, it's in fact a very, very critical event. This is the second consecutive time to have such an event in 2018. We had that before in 2017, and this is the second time. And I just got a very recent um, news that is the United Nations Secretary General's envoy on youth affairs is expected to be arriving on Saturday to deliver her keynote speech um, on Saturday, November 3rd. Now, what does that mean? It means that there is a global acknowledgement for such events and for the importance of this event. Now, I read some information about this event, and it's quite a bit interesting to know that about 5,000 participants coming from different countries in the world, and it's quite a bit interesting and intriguing as well to know that 75% of the participants coming from European countries, from South America and North America. 30% or 35% coming from Africa, coming, coming from the Arab world as well. It's a quite a bit intriguing to see something like that. I would say that if we have a Facebook as a social network electronically, then we're going to have another um, social networking happening, but this time it's going to be face to face. Yeah. So uh, I guess that the world today is talking about such event, um, and, and this is probably can be a very, very important step to push our youth forward at the end because this is our target at the end. Yes, our target at the end is pushing the youth uh, forward and making them like initiate uh, and, and also uh, innovate and initiate creativity. The word That's creativity That's true. is very important. To how to be creative <laughs> right. and how to bring the best out of the youth. In fact, well, for this event we have three important tracks. There is creativity and there is development and there is also issues and topics related to peace. So for creativity, they are expected to discuss some issues related to 
technology and digitalization. They are expected to talk about, for example, how to find different opportunities, job opportunities by using electronic ways. They are expected to talk about the soft power of the country. They are expected to talk about how to build the future leaders and how can we create the build-up process for the future leaders. And this is, um, again, this is very interesting because um, as a matter of fact, we have today something which is called the National Agency for Training the Youth. The youth yes. It's in Cairo. Preparing them for leadership. And it's post. very similar to what, what it is in France. Um, may I not be wrong about yes. that? And, and so there, there are tangible steps that's happening. And we would like just to put our hands on the positives. We would like to see the light at the end of the tunnel because this is the hope that we are just working for. Um, and, and so when it comes to creativity, this is um, today, for example, there are some introductory sessions, uh, some workshops already initiated and started today, and it's expected to be tomorrow as well. So this environment is very positive for every youngster, and it's going to be very encouraging. Okay. Now, I know that there are some international events, but for this one to invite 5,000 participants, I'm not quite sure how many people will be participating next year, but to have 5,000 participants coming from different countries in the world, now in this way we are just building something like a very important image for Egypt. At the same time, we are activating the process for investment. We are making a refreshment for the economic process. But the most important message, I guess, that the officials would like to send it to the whole world, not just in Egypt, it's just in a nutshell, one simple sentence, Egypt is safe. Egypt is safe, Egypt is capable of organizing uh, uh, such huge international events. Egypt welcomes visitors all over the world with a smile and with a destination that is really unparalleled all over the world. The beauty of Sharm el Sheikh, uh, the city of peace, welcoming Egypt's visitors uh, with a smile and with the hospitality of Egyptians. Let's watch this report on the second edition of the World Youth Forum from Sharm el Sheikh from the City of Peace. We'll be back. Delegations from around the world started arriving on Wednesday at Sharm el-Sheikh International Airport to participate in Egypt's second World Youth Forum. The forum is to be held from the 3rd to 6th of November under the auspices of President of Fatah al-Sisi at the Red Sea Resort, city of Sharm el-Sheikh. Some 5,000 young people, journalists, public figures and officials from more than 50 countries across the world are set to participate in this year's edition of the forum. The forum also decided to host 5,000 youth from 145 countries to participate in this year's forum compared to 3,000 participants last year. The forum, which will be attended by President El Sisi, will focus on the themes of peace development and creativity, as well as various topics that reflect the visions and aspirations of the world's youth. The forum will also give participants the chance to exchange their experiences in different fields, including development and innovation. Last year, the forum, which was held for the first time in Sharm el Sheikh, attracted thousands of participants from around the world with official delegations and young people from several countries. The World Youth Forum was first announced during the country's National Youth Conference in Alexandria in July 2017, which was also attended by President Sisi.
Their second annual edition of the forum will tackle two main axes, peace and development. The forum is to explore key issues facing their generation and determine their role in implementing global development goals and in facing terrorism. The first axis will discuss reconstructing post-conflict countries and societies, the role of the world leaders in achieving peace, the duty of the international community to provide humanitarian assistance and counter-terrorism, and the Euro-Mediterranean partnership. The axis of development will include topics related to energy and water security empowerment of people with disabilities, the role of voluntary work in building societies, the agenda of 2063 African Sustainable Development Digital Citizenship, the role of art and cinema in shaping communities, ways to build future leaders, and means of shrinking the gender gap in the workforce. An Arab-African summit simulation model will be held on the sidelines of the forum, as was recommended during the African Union simulation model held in May 2018 as part of the activation of 2017 World Youth Forum's recommendation. The first edition of the World Youth Forum was launched from the 4th till the 10th of November 2017 in Sharm el-Sheikh. It was attended by 3,200 participants from 113 countries. The forum was a platform for 222 speakers from 64 countries with expertise in various fields gathered in 46 sessions. In 2017 edition, the participating leaders and experts discussed various international and regional issues, including crises of migration and refugees, democracy and human rights, African stability and development and globalization and cultural identity as well as technology and social media and their impact on the population. In July 2017, the president announced organizing for the first time the forum in Sharm el -Sheikh during the fourth national youth conference in Alexandria. فتحنا علينا في الدنيا وجينا بنلون ونشخبط بايدينا وبنرس يعني الابداع كان مولود فينا لحظتنا وعينا لو شفنا وبصينا حوالينا نتعلم يلا سيب بصمتك يلا يلا سيب لمستك يلا From Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt, from the city of peace, it's always a pleasure uh, to talk to our dear colleague, our correspondent at the World Youth Forum from Sharm el Sheikh, Omnel Hamzawi. Uh, Omnel, good evening to you, my dear. Good evening, Mrs. Tarid. Uh, today, uh, actually, the workshops had started, the beat had started, uh, the beautiful smile of Egyptians welcoming Egypt's guests was there. As we could see, uh, the world today seeing a great forum and a platform for youth interaction. Mnea, uh, today, uh, 5,000 participants in this edition, even instead yeah. of 3,000, which is actually a very significant figure. Themes of peace, development, and creativity as the slogan of this edition of the forum. Uh, yeah. Tell me more about the beat from Sharm el Sheikh today. Actually, the beats in Sharm el Sheikh started a few days ago, not only today. Uh, what we have more today was how we met this youth coming from all over the world, especially today. Uh, uh, the day was focused on the workshops mainly. The two subjects of the workshops were dedicated to the disabled people all around the world and their integration in their own societies. And the second one was regarding the development, the sustainable development <coughs> in Africa and its agenda for 2063. So we met a lot of African youth. What we noticed more and more is, is how the organized, let's start by very, very small parts of this uh, atmosphere, a beating atmosphere, a festive atmosphere, a few days ago even. Let's start by how the organizers, organizers of the PLP or the Presidential Leadership Program, these youth, 
has organized this huge conference, this huge platform. Uh, what I noticed as well is uh, since airports, international airports, not only in Egypt, coming to Sharm el Sheikh, and role they play and how they how they they cope with all the guests here. This is what's really remarkable since we arrived to Sharm el Sheikh. We have to say that Sharm el Sheikh. Participants, especially today, regarding the African youth. Let's talk, especially, Mrs. Tarid, about <laughs> what the youth is aiming this time. The, 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 all the subjects, the themes tackled, or will be tackled, are very deep this time. They will talk about the agenda, about Africa, how they see Africa, how Africa can depend on its own human resources, and they. Uh, they, know, they talked about Egypt during the interview today, how Egypt was so able to initiate with such a World Youth Forum regarding the Arab world, and especially in the two fields, uh, fields that we talked about uh, regarding the agenda, as well as disabled people. If you remember, Mrs. Tarid, we were here in Sharm el-Sheikh less than one month when uh, His Excellency, the President uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi, he <clears throat> initiated and he launched the first regional uh, forum for disabled persons. And this time, the YOF is playing a very big role in this regard. The second one was the, uh, the, the agenda, especially of, uh, um, uh, of um, uh, 20, uh, 2063. Um, and we have to say that the World Youth Forum as well, I would be positive. theme, as you said before, uh, uh, at the beginning of the interview. Let's talk as well, Mrs. Tarid, about how the, the youth that we interviewed today, I had the chance to meet a lot of African youth today. They, they said, and you will be following through the interviews, how Egypt is today an example for uh, preparing and organizing such a big event, for uh, an example not only for Africa, but uh, uh, as well an example for the whole world and how Egypt was so strong to uh, face all the challenges the challenges imposed uh, to in front of the African continent how, how Egypt succeeded in this and how this year today gathered to more communicate and to deeply communicate together and they need and they said that um, every responsible and all the deciders the decision makers were always ready to hear them and to bring their own point of view and they have a confidence a deep confidence that they can change the world Thank they you very will, much they, yes. they work for prosperity mm -hmm. they work for peace they work for development they care about every small item facing the whole world today. Thank you, Omneya, so much for uh, your valuable feedback from Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, from the City of Peace. That was uh, our dear colleague and correspondent to the World Youth Forum, Omneya al-Hamzawi, highlighting more about the impressions that uh, uh, the dear uh, participants and guests of Egypt uh, told her and will be airing also part of uh, Omneya's interviews. Thank you. Uh, Professor Abdel Tawab, as Omneya said, uh, the organization for this important event is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting the guests with a smile and also in initiating many important themes like peace, development and creativity, which right. is the main slogan. Right. And, and you know what? I guess that this is part of something that is very important as well, which is called the soft power of Egypt. Um, we have to talk about that and we have to acknowledge that there is a soft power here and the soft power is based on the language, the culture, the history, the religious institutions. As you're saying now, people in Sharm el-Sheikh, they are receiving people with very warm welcome and with smiles. This yes. is part of the soft power of the Egyptian people. Mm -hmm. I know that this event in this event, and I would like to give a salute to everyone actually organizing such event, because they have selected a very important character, Egyptian character, that is the late writer, Dr. Milad Han. And um, he is the, um, I would say, the absent guest for such event. Um, and he wrote a very important book. Um, it, it's entitled, The Seven Pillars of the Egyptian Personality. Mm -hmm. And for the seven pillars of the Egyptian personality, it will be discussed and reflected in such forum. So he talked about 
history, number one, whether the Coptic history, the uh, Islamic history, e even the Pharaonic history as well. And then there is something else that is the geographical dimensions of the country. And this is again what Dr. Gamal Hamdan talked about in his famous book, um, um, uh, Egypt's Personality, if I'm not wrong about the, name, the title of the book. So. Um, he mentioned something very, very critical here. He said that Egypt um, has three important dimensions because you, you were just talking about the African dimension. He mentioned that, that there is a dimension with the Arab Peninsula. Yes. And there is another track that is connected with Africa. And this is connected with very important strategic channel that's called the River Nile. Mm -hmm. And there is one more, one more dimension. It's the European uh, side um, or Mediterranean side, if I would say so. That is why when somebody says, for example, you are Egyptian, you are not Arab. No, I am Egyptian and I am Arab and I am African yes. and I am Mediterranean. So this is the cocktail diversity for and diversity, mm -hmm. if I may say the word the cocktail here. Um, and so, yes, there is something like cultural enriching components that we have in this personality. Mm -hmm. This can be reflected in the event as well. Back again to our topic, we were talking about the soft power, we were talking about history, and then we were talking about uh, culture. And for the culture, we are talking about the literature. Look to the Egyptian writers and their sounding um, fame across the Arab world. Yes. Uh, when we talk about the language they read, even when it comes to Arabic language with the Egyptian dialect, if you just go and visit any Arab country, mm -hmm. they know very well what is yeah. the Egyptian they dialect. They the songs by heart, <coughs> they, uh, they also watch the movies and the series. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. When I was in some Arab countries, I was telling them I am Egyptian. The first thing they were saying, uh, Ismail Yassin, yeah. or something like that. So now you can see the extent, the cultural and civilizational dimensions of the country outside. This is what it is called the soft power of the country. We were talking as well about the religious institutions. And look, now you have two important milestones in your country. There is the Azhar institution and there is the Coptic church. And I just read a few days ago that the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, he made a visit to Indonesia and Malaysia, something like that. Yes. He was received with a very warm welcome. And the people there, they were so happy to have the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar coming and visit their countries. Definitely. I heard mm -hmm. some Indonesian students, they were saying and repeating the national anthem of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Now, so here you have another powerful tool that is used. For this forum, this forum is a reflection of all of such soft powers that we have in our community. Let's go to soft power. Uh, a song actually when it is played, we just remember the sense of interaction among the youth themselves talking about uh, their dreams and uh, they are talking about or we are dreaming of a place where uh, our aspirations would be achieved, where we work on important targets and have them uh, achieved. Let's watch. I'm 
ظروف ونعيش من غير احساس الخوف ما عالم واحد كل الناس بتعيش جوا A very special song, a very inspiring song, where the youth uh, talk about their dreams and about their uh, aspirations. With us uh, is Ms. Neda Mohamed Shafi, uh, PR specialist. And PR is very important, you know, PR networking, uh, communication, uh, and interaction. And this is what is happening at the World Youth Forum. Neda, how are you? Hi, how are you, Dr. Uh, Mrs. Tagreed? How are you? How are you? And how uh, uh, Dr. Abd Tawab wants, wants to say hello to hi, you. Hi, Nada, how are hi, you? Hi, Dr. Ahmed, how are you? It's, it's how... good to hear your voice back again. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, Nada, tell us more about uh, building capabilities that has been one of the most important files also that the President has given instructions to focus on. And if we talk about building capabilities, we're talking also PR because it requires communication with the other to know more about the points of strength to work on. And uh, uh, how do you see this vision implemented? I, I think uh, the forum is a good chance for the youth to in, uh, in, building, in building their capabilities through the PR, through their uh, interaction with each other, with, in, not, in, not internationally, for enhancing their personality through intellectual change of cultures, ideas, and traditions, uh, presenting their points of views in all issues concerning the uh, global uh, universe uh, problems concerning the youth and the elders. I think it's a good chance also for them to pre in presenting uh, a it, it, it acts as a link for them uh, with the leaders and decision makers, uh, uh, b building the gap or um, t uh, touching the gap between the two generations and reducing it by uh, rebuilding the links. Uh, of trust between them, uh, the, the youth and the elders. It also helps in, um, in uh, the PER representative in drawing a clear global map of the youth's interests and, uh, and, the use, uh, and the use of the picture in the development of treatment of recent mistakes and problems. Um, yes. This is how I see it. Yes, very, very wisely said, and uh, as, as you've mentioned, it's very important in, in communication, and this is what is happening uh, at the forum, engaging the youth participants with the policy makers, and uh, with the main aim is mainly uh, knowing more about the points of strength and working on them. Ms. Neda Shafi, PR specialist, I thank you so much for uh, your participation in our show tonight. Uh, Dr. Abdel Tawab, yes, PR is very important because you need to market uh, market Egypt in the That's first true. place to the world, and That's this true. is also what the forum is doing because right. each and every <clears throat> participant is going <clears throat> to go back home with um, with memories, beautiful That's memories. True. And mm -hmm. here is the question that mm -hmm. everyone today is probably trying to ask: What is the significance of this event? Mm -hmm. And I would I would stand for the idea: It is quite a bit important, and it is reflected indirectly and also on a direct way. So if I would go for the indirect way, then um, from economic perspective, it activates the investment process. It refreshes um, the economic scale as well, because in this way, you are activating the tourist um, sector in our country. And then it has also a political message that this country is safe that this country is stable, that this country can contain a lot of different nationalities. Um, so this is very important. But when it comes to the direct influence on the youth, on the youngsters, now here we have to stop and to think about that. Number one, I guess that the youth in such events, they are trying to make something like 
creating a major social networking yes, a order, platform. or a mm. platform yes. in order to bridge the gap between different cultures. Mm -hmm. We're going to have 5,000 participants coming from different cultures and they are interacting together. So mm -hmm. this is quite a bit important. Investing in uh, what you initiated in your latest article in Al Ahram Weekly That's talking absolutely. about technology and, uh, uh, and electronic ways. Right, I was talking Investing about. in that right. is another important dimension. I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, so I was, I was talking about digitalization uh, and uh, technology and education, and we would like to expand our, um, our vision, not just in education, but in every aspect in our life. Today, we have the Prime Minister talking about that we would like to change our society to be a digitalized society. Right. Today, we are talking about that we're going to have... Access services uh, access easily. Everything. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have different uh, new towns and cities with the fourth generation, which means that they are digitalized cities. Now, because I'm more involved in education, so I think that it's quite a bit important. And this will be also discussed in, the, in different seminars and workshops and, and in different sessions in the event. That is how to use technology mm -hmm. and how to help others, how to help those who are disabled and yes. have uh, some special, special needs. needs. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so if we just activate all of that together, then at the end we will reach one conclusion that is one word that is awareness mm -hmm. so and i guess that this is this is the challenge that we have that we would like to increase the awareness and we are just making and using different ways and practical approaches in order to get that what are the roles of professors at university uh, in uh, right. raising this sense of awareness and at the same time pinpointing uh, the right. points of strength and right. bringing up the best of the students. I think we have, and I'm talking about myself, I think we have a huge responsibility here because we are making something like the direct interaction with mm -hmm. the students. It's mm -hmm. either you push them forward or you push them yeah. back. And also the issue of being a role <coughs> model is very important. <coughs> I that mean, is they, they follow you, they, absolutely they yes. assess your way of thinking, that, that they is, analyze, they and, read you. Right, mm. and, and since we are talking about building the future leaders, then the youth today, they need the role model. You cannot build the future, future leaders without having role models. And if you just put that in the context of building a new generation, then you can, we can just see how important it is. I think that, um, <clears throat> for example, um, what I'm trying to do with my students is I'm trying to push them forward to participate in international and local workshops and inter international events and conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm applying for different scholarships and fellowships. I mean, they would like to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes. So that is probably could be um, the main point here. Um, and so back again to the role model because we are talking about building the future leaders. How can we do that? Yeah. Then we should have a number of features. And the uh, seven pillars of the Egyptian identity. And the seven identity. pillars. Mm. Well, first of all, mm -hmm. what do they need exactly? Well, they need, they need a role model that can contain them, mm -hmm. talk to them directly, um, interact and be engaged with all of them, pushing them forward and encouraging them. Motivating and them. And motivating them as well. This mm -hmm. is the real meaning of leadership. Yeah, we have many kinds of leaderships. You have the transformational leadership right. and the uh, the follow by example leadership. That's so true. More than one, more than one type of, of leadership. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And there's something very interesting to mention as well that we're gonna have the president coming in this event and talking and participating and talking directly with the youth. Yes, without so, any sort of barriers. And here we go. So mm -hmm. this is the point. And I think that if we just have that model, if we just have if we apply such approaches, then we will be able to create different models and different visions for the youth. I do remember what Martin Luther King said before. He said, well, if you cannot fly, then you can run. And if you cannot run, then you can walk. And if you cannot walk, you can crawl. But at least you must do something in order to achieve your target. And I think that we must do something to go forward and achieve our target at the end. We'll be achieving our target, inshallah, since we have all noble intentions uh, to make this country better. And let's uh, let's walk. Let's right. go ahead. Here we go. And, and okay. here we go to Sharm Sheikh Egypt. Let's run to Sharm Sheikh Egypt, <laughs> right. the city of peace, where Omnia Hamzawi 
conducted this upcoming interview with one of the panels attending uh, from South Africa. Sandil Shabangu, one of the panelists, Mr. Sandim is, uh, is going to uh, talk to us and speak about the importance today of the entrepreneurship, not only regarding the business, the old business, how we call, but also about Egypt, business in Egypt, entrepreneurship in Egypt, and how his experience was since he reached Egypt. Thank you so much for being with us. So uh, it's your first participation, Mr. Sandil, uh, here in Charm Sheikh. You said you were very uh, interested by how Egypt is boosting this forum and how the chances you can see, you can perceive the chances for the youth in many fields here in this second edition of the World Forum. Yes, it is indeed my first time participating here at uh, Sharm el Sheikh at the World Youth Forum. And I'm very, very excited to come all the way from South Africa to explore, you know, the, the awesomeness of uh, being here in Egypt and actually explore entrepreneurship and innovation and startups and actually uh, try to find ways and solutions as to how then can Egyptians and South Africans can actually work together to balance the scale and actually also try to help other African countries you know to participate in this entrepreneurial uh, uh, movement that's happening around the world. Okay, Mr. Sandili, how today uh, it's a world of business and Egypt uh, is uh, deploying many efforts and uh, putting this as a priority regarding the business, the, um, the future of the youth regarding entrepreneurship and business as well, and the economy growth of Egypt. How you can perceive today Egypt as one of the countries in the middle of what well, the most important countries of Africa in this field? When I was uh, interviewing uh, one entrepreneur earlier this morning, I could actually sense that Egyptians are actually amongst you know, the, the best entrepreneurs. They are um, excited and enthusiastic to actually try entrepreneurship. Um, and we've been actually trying to, 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 to learn um, how then can Egyptians uh, tap into these new industries that are there. Uh, we're still learning. So for, for, for now, I can say that I'm very, very excited that um, when I was looking at the statistics, about 73% of Egyptians have actually said that they are interested in entrepreneurship. And I find that uh, statistic overwhelming. And I'm so, so glad that uh, Egyptians are actually uh, now stepping into the, to, 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 to the plate of actually uh, trying out entrepreneurship. And I can see the state and even the, the president being involved uh, that takes a lot. It means that uh, Egypt is now serious about business, it's serious about entrepreneurship and actually supporting young people to start uh, and stay started in business.
So esports and coping with the new digital world is uh, another theme uh, running. Actually, our time is running out. So wrapping up uh, this uh, episode and a message uh, to the World Youth Forum and the participants. For I, think, I think that really it should be a global message to everyone in the world. What does it mean to say youth? It means passion. It means enthusiasm. It means accepting the challenge and taking the risk. It means to have the future vision for our future generations. I think that this is all about what does it mean to say youth. And I think that Egypt is just making a very right step forward towards this target at the end. Definitely a very important uh, event taking place and uh, uh, full positivity actually is, is in the air and uh, with